You've got TMAU2 questions, and I've got your answers. This is The Gut War. I recently got an email by a subscriber by the name of Kathy. She says, Hello, I'm recently following you on your YouTube. I had a few questions. Thank you for subscribing, Kathy. I'm not familiar with the Discord, and I'm trying to learn, so forgive me if these questions are already addressed on that Discord. What was your diet like when you were eating six to eight weeks of kefir? I am still drinking my kefir. I saw your recommendations, but curious to what your breakfast, lunch, and dinner really looked like. I think I understand there was no supplements used during this time. That is correct. No laboratory supplements, simply just food. I believe in let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food, 100%. She says, what is your workout, especially during the time of relief? Thanks, Kathy. Well, Kathy, I hope to answer all of your questions in this video. So to answer your question, everything on this board is what I was eating while I was drinking my kefir and eating my fermented foods to dwindle down my TMA overload, which is what TMAU2 is. It's just a TMA overload. For breakfast, I was eating egg whites, which is only 1.1 milligrams per 100 grams of choline versus egg yolks, which is 680 milligrams of choline. I was also eating turkey bacon for protein. I value protein. It's 61.0 milligrams of, of uh, choline per 100 grams of food. Mozzarella cheese is 14 milligrams per 100 grams of food. Now, the cool thing about mozzarella cheese is, out of all the cheeses, mozzarella is the lowest versus American, which is 36 milligrams per 100 grams. So you have to be strategic with your choline intake. Mozzarella is a good choice. Not only is it high in protein, but it's also high, uh, low in choline compared to the others. Now here's an example of what I had for breakfast. For lunch, I would have plain chicken, often on the skillet, which is, and it would be skinless, at 39.0 milligrams of choline per 100 grams of food. It would be a wise idea to invest in a digital scale and start measuring your food. I, I thoroughly enjoy sweet potatoes at 13 milligrams of choline per 100 grams of food. White potatoes are a little higher, but I value the nutritionist value of the sweet potatoes more. So I gravitate towards the sweet potatoes since being on a low choline diet, you strive to have good nutrients. And it's also a great source of fiber. White potatoes, 16 milligrams. Brown rice, 9 milligrams per 100 grams of food. Uh, white rice, 2.0 milligrams for 100 grams of food. So white rice, you're getting a good bargain on that one. It's not as nutritionally dense as brown rice, but it's pretty darn close and very low. Brown rice pasta. I eat brown rice pasta instead of egg noodle pasta. Why? Because brown rice pasta is nine milligrams per 100 grams of food versus egg noodle pasta is 79 milligrams per 100 grams of food. Now for dinner, uh, I, I would have organic plain yogurt before I learned about kefir, which is 14 milligrams per 100 grams. And this is plain Jane organic yogurt. Bananas are 9.8 milligrams per 100 grams of food. Berries, 8.6 milligrams per 100 grams of food. Apples, green apples especially, 3.4 milligrams for 100 grams of food. And they're amazing nutritional value and exceptional for fiber and your probiotics. And they'll help you win the gut war, green apples. Extra virgin olive oil is what I would use to saute the pan and use it for my brown rice uh, pasta for spaghetti and things like that with chicken. I would use extra virgin olive oil as my sauce with salt and pepper. 
Here's an example of a meal I made for my lunch. And that was sweet potatoes on a skillet with chicken, with salt, pepper, and olive oil. Kind of burnt a little bit for the carcinogens. <laughs> Delicious. Gut war foods. This is something I implemented. Organic sauerkraut, which is only 10 milligrams per 100 grams of food. Sauerkraut is packed with lactobacillus and bifidolongum. This is gonna help you win the gut war. Organic kefir, 14 milligrams per 100 grams of food. Organic pickles, 3.4 milligrams per 100 grams of food. When buying pickles, make sure they're organic and without vinegar or you're buying frickles. All of this information is from the USDA data for choline. So it's all accurate certified information. I'll put a link in the description Here's some tips. Get creative. Put some mozzarella topping on the sweet potatoes. You can make hash browns out of the sweet potatoes for breakfast. Uh, drink plenty of spring water. If it says spring water, then by law, they have to extract the water from the spring. It's way better for you than tap water. And a good ratio is take your body weight, divide it in half, and that's how many ounces of water you should be drinking minimally if you're in the right body mass index weight. My advice is for you to find your daily choline intake number that best works for you. Start at about 500 milligrams and depending on, uh, on reactions, start chiseling down that number. Also, whenever you're choosing what foods to eat, prioritize protein, fermented foods, and fiber. To answer your question about working out, I work out four days a week. I do squats, deadlifts, overhead press, push-ups, dips, and calves. Work out four days a week. My recommendation to you is try to implement exercise in your weekly regime four to five times a week. Make sure you accelerate your heart rate, do resistance, do cardio. That's just my advice to build a healthy body. And for Discord, I'm not very technical on computers, but the link for the score should take you directly to our Discord room. If it's not working on your phone, try on a tablet or a computer. I hope this answers all of your questions, Kathy. And before I leave, I wanted to show everyone some good news that we just received in our Discord. All of this is just advice, but this is what we're doing to win the gut war.